We say that prayer changes things, but do we believe it? Do we really take God at his word that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much? Discover the power-filled truth about prayer today on God Knows. The God knows. You know, Mike, some people might not know why we call this show that. I think you ought to tell them. Oh, do you? I Yes, will. I do. We call this show God Knows because He does. That's very brief and... <laughs> to the point. And to the point, No, yes. God knows everything. You know, sometimes people check their astrological forecast regularly. You know, they'll say, what sign are you of or whatever. Ooh, or tarot cards or some other... Uh, yeah, tarot, tarot cards. cards or something like that. But you know, God knows your future. And we do this show because God can do better than any of that. And so we're going to do a little teaching. This morning, a great teaching, mm -hmm. honey. And then we're going to come back and we're going to prophesy over you. So this morning, we are going to talk and continue what we did on the last program. Some of you might not have been with us. We're talking about secrets of increase. Mm -hmm. You know, God wants to increase you. He loves you. You know, His kingdom is an ever-increasing kingdom. Faith is ever increasing and God wants us to be blessed. You know, that, that was kind of a revelation to me. You know, I, I, I mean, we knew God would meet our needs growing up, huh, mm -hmm. honey? But and he the, had to. Yeah, and he had to because we were really poor. But I mean, but the point of being, you know, blessed and prosperous, that was kind of unusual for us. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, you know, it's interesting, Cindy, because even though, for example, we were raised in church, and we were taught that you should tithe. Yeah, and, and we had tithe, And we tithing had... releases a blessing. Right. Even though we knew that theologically, it was still it was so difficult to say to the God, bless me. Yeah, yeah. And and yet we have a, what we're talking about today is a continuation of our last uh, last time together, and and God talks about someone who specifically did that. Uh, First Chronicles 4, 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. Some of you may know this called the prayer of Jabez. But you know, I find that even I, I've taught on this, you know, and I know this, I have to go back and remind myself to pray this prayer. It says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, now this is the prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and that you would enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Now, this is the proof. And the Lord granted his request. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Very much so. I mean, some of you might not have heard the last show where I said that Jabez's mother evidently had a hard delivery, and the name he was called meant pain. Yeah. You know, so your mother calling you, oh, pain every day of your life can do something to your emotions. Oh, and don't you know that all of his friends when he was growing up would make fun of him? Yes. I mean, but to have you know, a name like that. But I bet it, the name was redeemed. Mm -hmm. The name was redeemed because we know later on that Jabez became a great man of the law. Uh, uh, he was honorable yeah. and actually had a school of the law and a city was named after him. Yeah, in fact, I was looking at some of the scripture passages. It's naming some of the tribes and where they were and they were they attributed some to be living in the city of Jabez. Yeah, so, you know, so think about this. In God's increase, you may be here in this situation. Your family may reject you. Maybe you, you were born into uh, circumstances of great poverty. You know, when I grew up, we prayed to eat. We didn't have money to eat. Mike's family went through mm -hmm. a season, right? Your daddy lost his job. And, and remember you told me that you put cardboard in your shoes. Yeah, well, it was embarrassing. Yeah, you know, it was really hard. But, you know, um, they, they didn't have money to eat for lunch. And so, you know, you think of the perspective we come from. I mean, I don't, maybe a lot of you out there had that circumstance. You know, I remember I had one pair of shoes that I wore for Sunday and one pair of shoes for school and play, you know, and th that was okay. I mean, I didn't feel poor, but the point is it didn't occur to us 
to say not not just give us some food, but to be blessed. Yeah. To be blessed. In fact, uh, not only did he pray, bless me indeed, but enlarge his territory. In other words, not only do I want to be blessed, but I want to have favor. I want to have a sphere of authority that increases. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking of this concept that God's kingdom is an ever increasing kingdom, I want to say this year, you should not go backwards no matter what the economy says. Let's believe to go forward. Let's believe that we will prosper. The Bible says we should prosper in being in health even as our soul prospers. You know, I tell you, I have been, and you have too, Mike, I have both abased and abounded. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, you know, I've learned contentment in both places, but I much prefer to abound. Yeah, and not only that, if, you're, if you don't have some basics growing up, it can really affect you. And I, I know that, that my brother, this is almost kind of a funny personal story, but we don't mind being personal okay, with you. Okay, Patrick can't even defend but, uh, himself here. When, when we were in high school, um, we wore athletic socks, mm -hmm. you know, the white athletic socks. Mm -hmm. and, and he was so embarrassed that, that we wore them until all the elastic wore out of them and they just kind of flopped down. Because you didn't have any Because we didn't have the money to buy others. And, and they were still functional, but it was an embarrassment because you could tell that you were different than the other kids. And so to, I mean, even after he grew up as an adult, he found that he purchased and always had about two or three times as many of those so socks as he needed because he was never going, he made a vow, I'm not going to ever be in a situation anymore where I'm embarrassed by having floppy socks. Now, now, honey, have you looked in your sock drawer? You know you're just like your brother and you like to have lots of socks. Right? I just never throw away anything. It's different with me. <laughs> Yeah, well, you we know. won't go there publicly We're on the air. We're not going to do air. an inner healing system. No, 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 no. Okay, but the point is God wants to bless <clears throat> us. He wants to bless our family, and he wants to enlarge in us. So let's believe, as you're listening to this, that you are coming to a place where you can say, bless me, Lord, and enlarge my territory. You know, what happens is circumstances come in our life, and they can, they can cause us to be stalemated. You know, in fact, number one, after asking God to bless you, number two, you could say is don't get stagnant. In other words, don't be content with the status quo. Don't be content with living your life in a way that like has a spirit of poverty on it. Mm -hmm. It's okay not to be extravagant. It's okay, you know, to, to believe for funds. Actually, we believe for more money so we can give more money. Mike mm -hmm. and I always want to give more money this year. I mean, there are times like when we haven't bought cars for ourselves so we could give money. I mean, mm -hmm. actually, in some ways, we live pretty frugally like that, but we are giving. You know, if you'd see, we're, everywhere we are, we're giving, we're sowing to bless other people. But you know what, Mike? Like when I needed a new iPad, our young emerging women and leaders, right. they bought me that iPad. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have to go shopping for it. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? What you sow, you reap. And, and so let's believe. Let's believe. Just say, bless me, Lord. Just say it right now. Bless me, Lord, mm -hmm. and enlarge my territory. And so, you know, you have to understand what is your territory. And this is also a beautiful, beautiful message of restoration. Yeah. It's such a message of restoration because, you know, he wasn't a victim of his name. He wasn't a victim of how he was born, the family he was born into. God did great things for him. I remember there's a, a president that is a great president of the nation, President Lee of Korea, and I think they're going to be having their election soon. But, but President Lee told us that when he was born, he was so poor. Yes that his mother couldn't even afford a stall in the market. She had to sell her fish just like in a mat or something in front of other people's stalls. Mm -hmm. His daddy died. There was five children. and But his mother got them up every morning, went to pray, yeah, early in the morning. He said that he would, many times being very young, yeah, he, was the he baby. would fall asleep during the time of prayer. But right. they just consisted, they persisted in their prayer. Right. And God began to bless them. And yeah. it really impacted his life because the seeds of prayer that they sowed began to produce a harvest for him as he was needing to go to school. Do you That's remember right. what he yes. told us about yes. that? Yes, yes. what he said was that there was a used bookseller in the market that mm -hmm. came to him and said, 
you know, you should consider going to, I guess it was high school. It was high school at that yeah. point, I believe, yeah. He said, I don't have any money to buy books. Evidently, you had to buy your own books. And, and the used bookseller said, I will lend you the books to go to high school. Yeah. So he did. He went to high school. And then after that, the bookseller came to him when he graduated from high school and said, you should go to college. Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't have money to go to college. And you know, the people in the market mm -hmm. took up money and sin helped send him to college. Listen, those prayers, no doubt, release that blessing. There was something that happened. This is a single mother, poor as can be, raising five children alone, honoring God. The Bible says that, Jake, that Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. And you know what happened? He ran for president, and he is the president of Korea. And he's an honorable man. So listen, you're listening. I don't know whatever country you're listening from. Maybe you're listening to a country that from a country and you're it's in war right now. Maybe there's unrest. Whatever it is, God is able to take you from that place. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh God, bless me and enlarge my territory. God's territory. God certainly enlarged President Lee's territory. He went from being a poor, poor son of a poor, poor woman to the president of a nation. That's right. You know, Cindy, we were talking in, uh, last time about that word more honorable in the Hebrew. That's the word kabod. Oh, that's powerful, Which is the Michael. weightiness of God. That yeah. It it's talks about being more honored. It talks about power. It talks about glory. You know, and it, you know, it could very well be that as if you're, if you're faithful to God and the prayers that were prayed by the mother of the future president of Korea, there was a glory that began to manifest in their lives. It may not have been something that you could see, but something caused the hearts of people who were around them to begin to say, I want to give. I want to release resource mm -hmm. to this family. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I believe that, that the resource that President Lee received before he became ever president mm -hmm. was due to the prayers that were prayed mm -hmm. from a mom, a single mm -hmm. mom, mm -hmm. and people said, and they may not have even known why, but they were attracted to the glory, mm -hmm. to the kabod, mm -hmm. to the, the honor, honor. Mm -hmm. uh, of this family. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. God can do that for your family. God desires to do that for your family. You know, the first example that we have of that term being more honorable is, is in uh, Genesis, the, uh, uh, I think it's the 13th chapter, second verse, and it's talking about Abram. Hmm. And it says, Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. And that's that word. Rich is the kabod, hmm. the glory, the wealth, the power. God indicates clearly in his word that he desires his covenant people to have the resource they need, not only for themselves, as the context is not just for themselves, but he knows that if they have the resource, then they can establish his covenant in the earth. Yeah, so you know, what do you need restoring? What needs to be restored in your life? You know, maybe family relationships, maybe, maybe you made a mistake in your life, maybe you went to jail, maybe, you know, maybe you have not lived an honorable life before your children, maybe you were a thief. Whatever it is, God is able to restore. You know, uh, it reminds me, I want to tell a story uh, of our friend Jim Baker, Mike. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I prophesied in 1988 that the old former PTL grounds, which was a ministry here in the United States, that six million people would visit this ministry every year. I mean, it was the pioneer in television, pioneer in 24-hour prayer with their upper room, pioneer with shelters for, for uh, like maternity homes, for women who were yeah. not married, wanted to keep their babies, um, uh, young men who were troubled, young men, they built, you know, the Fort Wilderness or whatever for that. It, it was so amazing. Talking about justice, you know, he was a pioneer in that, but, but he, um, there was a mismanage of money, of money that went on and people under him and he fell in sin. And, you know, he was so repentant of that, but he went to prison and he went to jail. And what happened after he left, a lot of things, you know, a lot of pain and, and, you know, uh, won't go into all the mistakes that even came after him. But I prophesied in 1988 that that whole place would be rebuilt. 
And I went to the upper room and I prophesied, which was the upper Tell room. Tell them about this upper room. Yeah. It was a very special place. Built the like, first 24-7 type place of its kind that yeah, we know of. Yeah, that we know of, yeah. And it was built just like the upper room in Jerusalem. Magnificent arches, architecture, the grounds, the gardens. Uh, well, I prophesied that it would be completely rebuilt and opened again for 24 hour prayer. And you know, I talked to some friends and they said it can't be done. They're gonna have to tear it down. Yeah. Mold. Yeah, it has mold all through it and it was just falling apart. So I prophesied that it would be rebuilt. And I was speaking for Mahesh and Bonnie Chavit at the time. And I said to a friend, take me by there. And we went to look. There was so much trash and garbage, wine bottles, and, and oh, it was just such a mess. People I lived in it. Yeah, or homeless, yeah, yeah whatever. And, 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 and so I went close to it, you know, picking my way through the trash, and I prophesied and I decreed, and I said, Lord, you said in 1988 this place would be rebuilt. This was just a few years ago now. You know, and it's 2012 now. And, and I said, and I prophesied again two years ago, this place will be rebuilt. And I decree that this will happen. Yeah. Well, fast forward. And the people forward. were all, all saying that that can never happen. It can there, happen. There are all the circumstances that are over this building are all saying the same thing. This will never be able to be rebuilt. Right. So I was at, um, <clears throat> in Charlotte ministering. And I was gonna, I was with some friends and they said, well, they said, don't you know that, that it's been restored? I was talking about the word about the upper room and uh, 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 with master media people there. And so I said, well, take me by. So we went by and it was amazing. Mm -hmm. I walked up, it was clean, it was beautiful. And when I came near the place, there was a man standing there, kind of looked the gardener, kind of scruffy looking. And he looked at me and he goes, are you Cindy Jacobs? I said, yes. And he said, I am the owner of this place. Mm -hmm. And he said, God awakened me at three o'clock in the morning for, and I would live in that, Chesapeake. That night. Yeah, yeah, I live in Chesapeake, Virginia. And I got up and got in the car and I drove that I, I knew I had to be here today. Now, isn't that amazing? That just mm -hmm. sending just that in of itself. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing that, you know, the very person that God used to fulfill the prophetic word was awakened in the night by God. Yes. Because God knows. Yes, because he and knows And he knew everything. he needed to be there on site at the same time that you were going to be there. That's just amazing yeah. in and of itself. But continue. Yeah. And so anyway, quickly, because our time's running out. Um, so he knew the prophecy. And so he said, when I bought this place, he said, I wrote in the contract, every single piece of furniture had to be put back in place. Some was in warehouses, some in a garage. You know, every single piece of the original furniture is in the prayer house, praying 24 hours. Said not only that, there used to be 17 prayer pavers where you'd walk with scriptures on them. Couldn't find the last two. Found out there was a street that had been built over it. We dug under the street, cut them out, pulled it back. Then there was one left, got bigger equipment, dug under the street some more, pulled the very last stone out and put it in place. Mm. God Complete is God a, restoration. God is a restoring God. What is the message to you? Whatever's happened to you, wherever you become a pain, you pray the prayer of Jabez. Pray, God bless me. Bless me, God. Enlarge my territory and keep me from evil and he will do it. We say that prayer changes things, but do we believe it? Do we really take God at his word that the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much? Now more than ever, it's important to follow God's command to pray. It's equally important that we fully understand the authority that God's given to us so that we can pray and then see things change. In this enlightening book, Authority in Prayer, Praying with Power and Purpose, best-selling author Dutch Sheets reveals the biblical secrets that can help you pray with focus, purpose, and power. This thoughtful step-by-step -step book will help you discover how to take firm authority over your own life, explore ways God wants you to pray in challenging times, expand your prayer for influencing seemingly impossible circumstances, and fully walk in God's will and power in the face of every situation. In appreciation for your gift of $20 or more, 
Cindy and Mike want to send you Dutch Sheets' book, Authority in Prayer. They also want to give you Cindy's encouraging message on CD, Expect Divine Encounters. God does not want you to walk through life alone. In her power-filled message, Cindy reveals that divine encounters are happening all around you, all of the time. Find out the biblical truth that God desires an encounter with you. Your faithful financial support fuels the ministry of Cindy and Mike as they take the prophetic word of God around the world and you help keep the God Knows television program coming to you every week. Call now with your gift of $20 or more to receive your own copy of Authority in Prayer, Praying with Power and Purpose, along with Cindy's message, Expect Divine Encounters. Call or click now. Hi, welcome back. The Holy Spirit is showing me there's some of you have been watching this show in prison and you relate to the story of needing restoration. And I just want to speak to you this morning that God restored Saul and he became Paul. Mm -hmm. I see there's someone you're watching and you have been doing Bible courses, uh, you know, just uh, long distance Bible courses and you have a passion to preach the gospel and the Lord is going to do that. The Lord is going to bring that restoration to you. In fact, I know a young man named J. Dan Gum who now has a ministry to uh, a former felons, and, and he is one himself. And God restored him just miraculously, gave him a beautiful wife. He's about to have a baby. So be encouraged. God is on your side. The power to God to mm -hmm. restore is beyond imagination. Oh, Cindy, God's so precious in this. I'm sensing that there's some women out there. And uh, when you were younger, uh, you had an abortion. And there's some of you who were also sexually promiscuous when you were younger. And, and, and your womb's been shut up. And God wants to let you know He's getting ready to restore your ability. He's going to break the barrenness in your life. You're going to be able to have children. It's, it's, it's just amazing to see that God's going to do that. We'll, we'll hear results of this in the coming day, Cindy. Why don't you pray for them for that? Well, Father, I just right now, Lord, I break the barrenness. Lord, you have the um, amazing ability to go into someone's life and do complete restoration. You've done partial restoration in some of these people's lives, but we say complete restoration, complete wholeness, no more miscarriages, no more barrenness. We break it today in Jesus' name. There's someone watching and you have... Uh been in a car accident and you've broken a lot of bones in your body, I just say to you, be healed in the name of Jesus. God wants to heal you. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I see someone else that you had a surgery and you just can't recover from that surgery. You're just not getting better. But I break the spirit of infirmity that came into your body and I say, be whole, be well, recover in the name of Jesus. Recover all your strength. Now just pray, Lord, bless me, bless me. And the Lord just says, I'm going to take care of these bills. You don't know what you're going to be able to do. But God says, I have a plan to get you out of debt that occurred from medical, you know, medical bills and things. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Cindy, I'm sensing that there's some people out there that have heard the message of the prayer of Jabez. In fact, you know, it was very popular not that long ago. And, and you began to make those prayers and God started bringing increase. But there also then the enemy began, began to come against you because of the threat you were to his kingdom and shut down the increase that you had received. And you drew the conclusion incorrectly. Well, that must not work. God must not have meant it for me. And God wants you to know that, yes, it does work. Go back to the first things. Begin to pray because the word says you have not because you ask not. And really, you need to ask and ask and ask. You need to be persistent in your prayers. And if you will be persistent in your prayers and not give up and not give in when the enemy pushes back against you, you're going to see the full success that God has designed for you. Well, you know, there's someone watching and you're thinking, I made such a big mess in my life. How could God ever restore me? In fact, you just thought that. You thought that. You've been thinking about that during mm -hmm. this whole program. And the Holy Spirit is saying to you, I heard you think that thought. You know, God knows. He knows what you're thinking. And I want to say to you, this is God saying to you, He's giving you a new beginning. Take it. Take it. Don't doubt that He loves you. Get up. He's going to provide a job for you. He's going to provide a way for you. You are not alone. You are never alone. In fact, I see a widow 
I just can see a picture of you, a widow watching the show, and you are so alone. But God says, I want to tell you, you're never alone. I'm going to provide for you. Yeah. Cindy, I just think it's really important for people to understand that for some of you who have been going through a, a season, you'd, you'd characterize it as a winter season. Things have been so tough for you. But I've got good news for you. I'm hearing the Lord say, let them remind them that spring comes after winter. And they're now moving into a, a season of springtime where there's going to be fresh, refreshing the earth is going to spring forth for you. The things that you've desired are going to begin to come to birth once again. Yeah, I tell you, when God gives a blessing, He gives no sorrow mm. with the blessing. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we do thank you. We agree that you are blessing your people. Now, take this word and use it. Mm -hmm. Use it in your life and believe. Make a list of the things you need and believe that God is going to bless you with those things. Well, Mike, this has been great. You know, when I was asking the Lord, what could we offer that would really help and encourage yeah. people? You know, I felt that we should offer our good friend Dutch Sheet's book, Authority in Prayer. And this is so necessary. I remember when we started studying authority, the believer, we never knew we had authority, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is praying with power and purpose. And this couple with this prayer of Jabez yeah. will really be a blessing. And, uh, and we're also going to throw in... Um, Expect Divine Encounters. This is a supernatural, really fun. Cindy, one of the most important things about that book is we know uh, from experience that any time you start moving forth in the things of God, your authority to move forth in God is going to be challenged by the enemy. You need this book so that you will know that you know that you know about your authority. Yeah, and for about the first 30 or so, we'll send you the first edition hard copy. After they're gone, we'll send you some others. So for your gift of $20 or more, call our toll-free number and we'll send it to you. Did God do something miraculous in your life that you'd like to share with us? Send us your story when you write us at story at godknows.tv. We face a critical moment in history. Without a change in direction, the United States will accelerate into unstoppable decline. Will this nation remain a city set on a hill or is it headed over a cliff? It's time to make a stand. That's why we must take two critical steps to pray and to act. The United States Reformation Prayer Network is a 50-state union bringing you strategic state and national information that you'll need for effective targeted prayer. With your free membership at usrpn.org, you'll have the source for key intelligence that will help put your prayer into focused action. usrpn.org has scores of contributors and thousands of members, and usrpn.org will keep you aware and armed. Sign up now. Registration is free. usrpn.org. Make a stand. Stand for right. God Knows is an outreach of Generals International and is only made possible through the generous donations of partners like you. Thank you. For more resources and information on how to partner with us, please visit our website at www.godknows.tv or write us at P.O. Box 340. Red Oak, Texas 75154.